Hey friends, what's up? Derek here from Bomb Socks with another day of Bomb Bites where we feast upon the words of Christ one bite at a time. So today I want to take you over to Isaiah chapter 22. Now this is a very unique chapter. It is a messianic chapter. In fact, the chapter heading says, Jerusalem will be attacked and scourged. The people will be carried captive. The Messiah will hold the key of the house of David, inherit glory, and be fastened as a nail in a sure place. Now, let me pause for a second right here. So I've uh, there's a book that I've got from Elder Holland, and I would totally recommend this book. It is called Witness for His Names. And this is one of those books that Elder Holland put out just a few years ago, just talking about the different titles and the different names of Jesus Christ and the things that we can learn from him. Well, one of those in here is referred to as a nail in a sure place. Now, let me back out for the story here for a minute. Now, you've got in this story in chapter 22, uh, a guy by the name of Eliakim. Now, the footnote here, this is chapter 22, verse 20. It talks about this guy by the name of Eliakim, and it says, Eliakim shall replace Shebna, who was also a leader there. He apparently did some wrong things and was replaced by Eliakim. Moreover, the symbolic name of Eliakim in the ensuing verses becomes representative of the Messiah, the Savior, in particularly verses 23 to 25. The name means God shall cause to arise. Now, what I want to do, I want to let Elder Holland teach you for a moment, and I'm just going to read this to you. It's only just a page and a half or so. But uh, what Elder Holland says about this idea of the nail in the short place. So it says, in a moving messianic tribute, Isaiah prophesied of Christ's mission and crucifixion with these words. I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle. I will commit thy government into his hand, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place." And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house, and they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and the issue. I'm going to talk about that in a second here. All vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of flagons. And then the last verse, verse 25. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the short place be removed and be cut down and fall, and the burden that was upon it shall be cut off for the Lord hath spoken it. So I love here back in verse 24, especially where it says, they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house. Now I have made a reference to glory there. I've, I've footnoted Moses 139, which says, for behold, this is my work and my glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. You guys know that verse. However, what's interesting is when it says man, it means everybody. It, it means the high and the low, the sinner, the saint, all of those individuals. Back in that verse 24, it says the offspring and the issue, the literal descendants versus the offshoots that come from that. All vessels of small quantity from the vessels of cups, these smaller cups, even to all the vessels of flagons. Flagons are more of these huge jugs, these gallon jugs right here. So it is something, this atonement of Jesus Christ is something for everybody. It's not limited to just individuals that are high. It's for everybody. Now back to what Elder Holland says here. When the Roman soldiers drove their four and one half inch crucifixion spikes into their victim's flesh, they did so first in the open palm, but because the weight of the body might tear that flesh and not sustain the burden to be carried, they also drove nails into the wrist down to the nexus of bones and sinews that would not tear no matter what the weight. Of course, many of you are familiar with that for that's temple text if you're familiar with. Thus, the nail in the wrist was the nail in a sure place. Once it was removed and the savior was cut down, the burden of the crucified body, more literally the burden of the atonement, was brought to an end. In terms of our salvation, I love this. Christ is the nail in the sure place, never failing, never faltering, ever the most certain and reliable force in eternity. For this we surely hang upon him all the glory of his father's house. So I love that message right there to remind us about Jesus Christ. Again, like I said last week, one of the things that's going to help you understand the book of Isaiah is to look for Jesus Christ. And as you look for him, you are going to find him. And he is very much here in this chapter. And I love him. And I am grateful for his atonement that allows me 
a sinner, an individual who does dumb stuff just like the rest of us out there, to be able to participate in the goodness of life as we show faith in him. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thanks again for sharing these messages. So grateful that you do that. Please check out our amazingly comfortable gospel-themed socks at bombsocks.com, and you guys have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Godspeed. Bye-bye.